options for you to choose from. 85 octane, 87 octane, 89, 91, sometimes 93. And then uh, if the place sells it, you'll also see E85. Okay, so um, the octane rating for regular gasoline is different than E85. When you see E85, uh, what E85 actually means is that it's 85% ethanol. So it's not talking about an octane rating like the other options under regular gasoline. So uh, E85 being 85% ethanol and 15% regular gasoline uh, actually has a higher octane rating than uh, even 91 octane. So uh, it's said to be anywhere from 95 to 100, but they don't want to put that on the pump as an option or people will think it's just a higher octane, I suppose. So it's specified as E85 for ethanol. So make sure when you're filling your car up, if you're even going for the cheap stuff, for 85 octane, don't uh, put E85 in. And uh, the reason why, there's a few reasons why you can't run just regular, or that you can't run E85 in a regular system. And uh, part of it's because of corrosion. Uh, E85 is more corrosive. It's uh, an alcohol, and it can dry out seals and do all kinds of stuff if your fuel system is not built for it. And uh, one of the other things is E85, uh, or ethanol, only contains uh, one-third the energy content of gasoline. So therefore, you have to burn two-thirds of it in order to get the same output. So why would you want to burn, burn more fuel? Um, you know, you, you would wonder why that would, uh, how that would even balance out. But uh, E85 being ethanol and corn-grown alcohol, basically, it's a lot cheaper to manufacture. So uh, that's why there is a, you know, if you have an E85 equipped car that can run off of both, um, you might have a break-even uh, point in there where you're paying less for the fuel and uh, having to burn more of it. So uh, it's it's also just kind of an alternative fuel. Uh, it's uh, like I said, it's uh, made from corn, and so therefore it's processed a little differently. And at times it can be less expensive to process it that way rather than you know uh, processing it from a barrel of oil. So let's talk about octane ratings for a minute and why what what the difference is. Okay, so the easiest way to describe an octane rating is the higher the octane, the more resistant the fuel is to exploding on its own. So this is where we'll stop for a minute and talk about diesel fuel, just for a sec. So diesel fuel, the whole principle is that you compress the fuel enough to the point where it explodes on its own. There's enough pressure and heat that the fuel just explodes. Okay, that's why diesels don't have spark plugs. And so they're operating under a principle of, of heat and pressure. The piston's on its way up, it's compressing the air, and it's compressing the fuel air fuel mixture. And once it gets to a certain point, it just explodes. Okay, so that's kind of how a diesel fuel works. And that's how you do not want your gasoline to work, or your E85 for that matter. So, um, well, what you want in a gasoline engine is uh, you want the piston to be compressing the air-fuel ratio and then you want it to explode at the exact time that, uh, you know, that the ignition timing tells it to via a spark plug making the fuel, the air-fuel mixture uh, ignite. So you want to be able to compress that air-fuel ratio up to its maximum point and then have the spark plug ignite it. Okay, so that's kind of the main difference. So going back to the octanes, uh, 85 octane is actually um, the best bang for the buck, I guess you could say, in a, a normally naturally aspirated engine, or, or meaning an engine that's not turbocharged or supercharged. So 85 octane is, uh, you know, it'll, you're, you can get the most energy out of it. Because if you, you start upping the octane rating what you're doing is basically you're formulating the fuel to be less likely to detonate. So as it gets less and less likely to de detonate, or 
you know, more resistant to detonating, then you're losing a little bit of energy because you're basically training or treating the fuel to say, don't blow up yet, you know, don't ignite yet. And so the, the more additives that are in it to raise it to a higher octane, the less energy content you're gonna get out of it. Uh, and that's speaking with a naturally aspirated engine that's not supercharged or turbocharged. So the reason you would want a higher octane uh, is there's a few things that you can do to an engine to increase its performance, its horsepower output. And one of those is higher compression. So if you change the compression ratio in the engine so that it's compressing the air fuel ratio more, uh, then you know it's basically like the whole firecracker in your hand kind of a, a concept. So if you had your hand wide open and you lit off a little firecracker, it would sting. But if you have more pressure around the firecracker, it's gonna explode and, and do a lot more damage. So basically, inside of an engine, if you can compress that air-fuel ratio more and more and more and force more air into it, then you're gonna get more performance out of the explosion. And so that's where you start to get into supercharged and turbocharged cars, which uh, a supercharger or a turbocharger is forcing more and more air into the engine, known as boost or PSI. So basically, um, you're holding that firecracker tighter and tighter until it explodes. And so a supercharger or turbocharger would be basically, um, by adding more air and more pressure, it's like closing your fist tighter on the firecracker, if that makes sense. And so now you need, if you're dealing with higher pressures like that, you need a higher octane fuel. Because if you throw 85 octane in your car, when you supercharge your car, or if it's a, a turbocharged car, or even a high compression ratio car, then you're basically throwing fuel into that air fuel ratio that is gonna have so much pressure from the engine the supercharger or the high compression ratio that it is going to pre-ignite the fuel okay, and that's called detonation uh, or pre-ignition and you do not want either of those things to happen because if the piston is on its way up compressing your air fuel ratio and it explodes before it gets to uh, uh, the point it needs to be then you're basically stopping that piston dead in its tracks on its way up okay so supercharged car or a turbocharged car or a high compression ratio car you want to add uh, you want to throw in higher octane ratings that uh, where the fuel is less likely to explode under pressure so that's where uh, e85 has become very popular on supercharged and turbocharged cars because uh, where its true octane rating is closer to 95 to 100 you can really compress that fuel a lot more before it explodes. Now, the only way you're really gonna get a benefit out of that, however, um, is if uh, the car's tuned properly, if it, it, uh, you're changing your ignition timing, and basically getting you know better performance out of the fuel. Is uh, alone, if you just go and dump a higher octane in your engine, it's actually gonna hurt you. It's gonna give you less power, less performance, it might be a little bit safer uh, because, but it, it's, it's really now becoming a chemical equation of when is the fuel being ignited, how long is it burning, how fast is it burning. So there's really uh, you know a lot more that goes into it. So if you have somebody you know who has a a car and they they decide I'm going to make it faster, they're going to run and dump a whole bunch of hundred octane in there for some of those you know bottles of Torgo or the NOS or you know anything to up the octane rating well unless they're changing their ignition timing it's not really going to benefit them it's actually going to slow them down in fact uh, when I bought my Cobra a few years ago the owner put straight 100 octane in it and sent me on my way just because it would be safer and uh, he knew I wouldn't blow it up driving home which um, I wouldn't have done anyway because I'm very responsible with my cars but uh I'll tell you, the car felt very sluggish, um, and you can, I could start to feel the difference as the 100 octane kind of faded out, and I was adding 91, which is what the car was tuned for. I could, uh, I could start to feel the car come more and more alive. And so, um, anyway, I hope I've 
explained this pretty well that, uh, you know, in a nutshell, a higher octane is less likely to explode. Therefore, you can push up harder before it explodes. And it's most beneficial in a high compression engine or a supercharged or turbocharged car where you, you're adding more boost pressure into the engine and you don't want that fuel to pre ignite. Uh, so, if you have any uh, comments or questions, go ahead and add them into the comments for this video and if there's something I didn't cover go ahead and add that too and hopefully it's been uh, a good lesson on octanes and